Welcome everyone to today's episode of Let's DIY Solder a Mechanical Keyboard. You might have seen this Tech Yoda 2 keyboard in previous discussions that mostly is very special for its integrated track point. You can get this pre-assembled, however I got the DIY kit just for me to have the ISO layout otherwise pre-assembled. It's usually only American ANSI. So let's take this cherry switches and the DIY kit and let's build it together. So that is the box. We unboxed this already previously, but you can obviously look the detailed video of unboxing. The keycaps, yes, they are the slightly cheaper one. Well, cheaper ABS for backlit lighting here. You can certainly scrap your own. And all the other previously already unboxed. This is also, yes, this is super expensive, but we worked day and night here for that. Mostly expensive here for the CNC machined milled of one unibody aluminium block. It's yeah super heavy, super yeah no flex whatsoever, but yeah makes this whole thing a little bit expensive. And then the other building blocks, cable and LEDs, original Cree here for that measure, as well as stabilizers. I thought actually it might be a good idea to test this. First, connecting it to USB, see if the PCB works there, not that we sold everything and later realized it was dead on arrival. Shouldn't be, but you never know. Also, the switches obviously here, I said this before, I took this also because I didn't want the pre-assembled one with MX Blue. So these are MX Silence Red here for that typing experience. Also best with power. The, okay, this is, so that screws loosened here this cover here with yeah, this four screws here actually. As expensive as it is, you can say nothing for this fine machining here. Made in Taiwan, also a little bit, yeah, a little bit rough here, but it's probably, yeah, you don't touch it here, but yeah, could be slightly nicer. There's always something, right? So after a quick test that it works, plugging in the USB cable, uh, it indeed works. One strange thing is that it shows up also not only as human interface device but also USB storage. So whatever strange stuff for firmware update is going on there. I just got a little bit overview and figured out that this needs to be assembled with this top case cover stuff on there. And then the switches of course fitting snug in here. So that makes 70 switches to solder in. And um, then later we will do the ISO and control var variants here that have a little bit two millimeter off or something. So first all the regular keys and then the ISO enter and stuff last when everything else fits in there. As we unfortunately we learned the hard way assembling it and desoldering it already, yeah, don't ask. The stabilizers you need to put first, they are PCB mounted stabilizers, not plate mounted stabilizers. I didn't uh, knew even that existed. So why I've done this actually initially putting all the switches because of course the plate is on here and this is with uh, ISO options and all those many through hole variants there for switches and stuff. I wanted to have this keycaps on there like enter and backspace and such. So yeah, you need to install them first. You can't install them later unless you Dream all there, half of the, most of the aluminium away anyway, so yeah, don't make this mistake, that really sucks. Yeah, that was painful, desoldering everything, what a waste, but lesson learned, do it proper and sink it through, um, and yeah, don't take even each simple mechanical thing for granted. And now I even should make really sure that everything fits before we solder everything again. <clears throat> and this is apparently what this screws and plastic washers are for. At least without plastic washer that looked a little bit loose. So, so much to having a it's a freaking manual. Yep, 
Yeah, so the ISO enter key stabilizer also didn't fit here. Somehow this was smaller here, this indentation there. So yeah, some manual tweaking might be required. So now that fits there, what was too tight. So yeah. So given that the stabilizers are below this plate, I didn't took any chances and tested them before I solder everything back together. So yeah, that certainly much better when it's stabilized. So yeah, so much to that lesson learned. Let's solder everything back a second time. And maybe I plug them all in actually, otherwise it's just wiggling around the whole time. So that is a little bit time consuming to get them all. It's like in wait a second, we probably as yeah, a should. This stands off for the on the back also stands off for the screws for the track point there, so but yeah without manual it's of course a little bit strange that they didn't have any IKEA kind of manual there. So there's always room for having a very small room for error. I always thought Cherry is a German company, but they only, it's so funny that they manufacture part, partially in Germany, but they actually, I think a US company. That is really interesting, doesn't happen too often that US comp company just manufactures in Germany for the made in Germany label there. I actually wonder if they manually solder them together in Taiwan. Yeah, this is also uh, you order cherry switches and then of course some of the pins already bent. Of course fiddling the LEDs in there is in the other challenge which might, maybe I should actually try. Not that with the switch in the PCB that might be harder. Let's see. Oh, now this goes in very nicely. That is not a problem. Yeah, I really wonder. I mean in the really mass production they must do this automatically. Maybe the small batches of hundreds uh, couple of hundreds they might do this manually but I would think if you really want to sell this for 50 bucks you must totally automate this I guess. You certainly want to press the switches in one by one. Yeah this is also totally bent here. That comes from ordering here in plastic wrap back thing. This is certainly not Sherry's fault. This is just how they are shipped and delivered from your local electronic supply. So yeah, they do not yet fall out with most of the cherry key switches and of course it looks already much more like a actual re keyboard. So first switch. It's always a little bit more relaxed to do it yourself. Actually this solder, these holes are relatively large. So actually there is more solder than I would normally use going in there due to the size of the VRs or the through holes. Actually this is this switch is super close actually to the USB-C. You don't really don't want to ruin this SMD. You put there quite some solder in and it's not yet nicely looking so quite some solder going in there and then pretty close always be careful with SMD components, USB connectors and the famous last words live on YouTube. Given the space of the through holes there's not really something you can do wrong. Basically every child for Christmas with parents supervising them at the age of 8 or so, 10, maybe 10. So it's of course a super repetitive process. So you need to be careful to plug them in correctly. I plugged them all in. I noticed for soldering that this didn't have a pin coming through this. So I'm soldering this to let's see, maybe this is just bent. So yeah, not the most professional desoldering stuff here. That is what we have to work with. Of course, our luck that it's just here at the USB-C connector. 
Yeah, that wall is completely empty. The pin of that, of course, it's not coming out the most nicely. Fun stuff here. The good new wick. Also have old crap wick. Also, um, I learned the hard way that old. If this gets old and oxidates, it's not working as nicely anymore. So you don't want to keep this wick stuff too long. Otherwise, it's not picking up solar anymore. Of course, it's a nice birthday and Christmas project, probably for most people just said we can't wait for birthday or Christmas, we want to type now. Actually, I wonder, so the thing is also when you produce YouTube videos, you probably want some B-roll, like better zooming in or something, which probably we should also do for production quality of the pre-edited videos then. So, second row. So let's give this a short initial test if that works. Hopefully, did not look like we shorted something, but you never know. So, all those keys work so far, amazing stuff. So for the variations here of spacebar, alt and control, I wanted to really double check this, not that we sold us something that doesn't fit. And that is here for our somewhat German-like layout, this extra key here. That probably should go in like that. And then shift, as you see here, two keys, that would be, should be this one, I hope, or I think it looks like it should fit. So if you DIY your keyboard layout, I would suggest to better double check that you really have them at the right position. Maybe even plug them in like that and in like that just to make sure everything fits. Certainly nothing more annoying than soldering them out again. Win is here and alt. Hmm, just a little bit gap maybe. Yeah, they start to really snap in there nicely with the plastic snap-in mounting. Yeah, so there you see the difference between two millimeters left or right. Here another switch. So then, last but not least, your backspace key in the center. Where again you have maybe the option for smaller backspace and whatever there. Let's solder the last switches here, the ones we plugged in additionally for the key variants that are possible. I hope actually the LEDs fits in there, but we will see in a moment. I just don't want to heat them so much. I um, have no experience with the cherry switches, but I know from experience with other mechanical stuff, if you overheat it, this is why sometimes when it doesn't take the solder instantly, I go over to the other pin and uh, solder that first, not to have this plastic stuff heat up, but I don't know the temperature specification for those cherry switches, just that for other stuff I've experienced it in the past, so I just naturally always avoid overheating this stuff. With the LEDs you need to get the polarity right, and not in cathode, and I usually remember with plus, if you put the two lines of plus together, it's longer. So plus, positive, and then you just put them through there. And double check here. So this should be the correct polarity. The PCB has here plus and minus printed. And you probably want to be sure that it's correct before you solder this. So all the LEDs nearly in. Here's one more. 
certainly takes a while, repetitive process. And then a little bit bent here that they don't fall out while we flip it over for soldering. So then let's solder all the LEDs in, which might take a couple of more minutes. Okay, minus plus here, yeah, minus plus here. Yeah, see the option and positive in the center, that is what I meant with double checking that. The LEDs soldered. I just realized it's a little bit annoying that all the through hole wires get into the way, so we need to do it anyway. And if we do it now, then at least we have less in the way here to solder all of them. This is actually cut a little bit early. Yeah. So much too that, um, yeah, don't cut them too short. And um, yeah, you probably want to do it slightly earlier than later, maybe one row and clip them away beca Oops. because otherwise you have them all in the way while soldering the other rows. After soldering all the LEDs here, time for another test. How far did we get here with all this? Oh, this is bright. Okay, there are two. Okay, there's one LED actually missing and one not lighting up. Actually, okay, this is caps lock maybe, but um, that was this one. So all the others worked except caps lock, although it is soldered. Hmm. Does it not do caps lock or? Hmm. So after assembling, soldering, trimming, all of this, this works so far. Then let's do the final touch to the track point here. And that assembly, of course, is this one. And that has some two extra screws here. The track point assembly, of course, here also the PCB with then cherry switches, one of the few mouses and track points with cherry MX switches. So let's solder those together and then assembly everything. And um, yeah, also still need to screw in the whole track point anyway. Yeah, quite some solder going onto this through all wires. So then this PCB assembly goes back in here again. Our two screws probably have been these two. Are this the same? So then the track point assembly. Need to be careful with that one. One on YouTube broke it already, so let's hope we don't repeat that mistake. And that yeah, broke here. So, yeah. so that goes so two screws there and in like that. Before we sort the stabilizers, I want to get a feel for the typing, so let's sort those keycaps onto there and um, get some idea how that types. The shift, but also this the other side, oh, this might have been, yeah, this the other side. And as you can see, it starts to look like a keyboard. It's certainly a very nice compact one. The last but not least, getting it all back together here with the case and actually mouse buttons also. And then of course the stabilizers, which I shortly need to research how to actually assemble this puzzle. So then the track point buttons here and getting all the rest together again. So far so nice. I however just realized one strategic mistake. So it looks like the stabilizers need to go in first. That comes from apparently shipping this without instructions and doing that the first time. So the stabilizers go in. There is this notch here, this small rectangular thing. So that needs to align with this notch there. If you do it the other way around, you will notice that you cannot plug in here this wire goes here on the side with a 
when you snap in notches there so that you plug that in here and then the stabilizers move like that. The other way it just doesn't fit, you will see. So I just realized you apparently can't get this in with the switches so much to that strategic mistake there. So unfortunately you don't want to repeat this and I actually apparently need to get the switches out of there. So stabilizers first and yeah, fortunately a little bit of slightly annoying and unnecessary desoldering for me now. So now with everything assembled it is time. I tested it already and you probably want to test it too that everything works and uh, as you've seen I had to actually do it twice so don't make my mistake install the mechanical stabilizers first if they are PCB mounted anyway uh, plate mounted maybe more rare anyway this also means you can't service them right a little bit disappointing so yeah I'm new to that so that lesson learned all the LEDs work and uh, yeah actually quite surprising as I had to desolder them all and solder them in again so these are nearly 70 keys and LEDs so that is nearly 140 soldering points uh, times two so yeah quite some effort so yeah that is uh, when you do your mechanical keyboard that is what you get from that so then we can reinstall all the keycaps well you do it once I do it twice and uh, yes they need a little bit more press I just try to position them check that because again the switches could have been slight variations two millimeters left or right depending on your layout Slightly wondering which way is the correct way for the shift so yeah Uh, by the way, in the initial assembly I swapped X and Y, but I only later found out that they have a different slope there. So even for an ISO layout you don't want to do that. And of course the ones with track point modification. But if you bring your own keycaps you can just dremel that out. So and then finally assembled. Everything checks out so far. Then let's put it back in the case and we are done. Track point assembly, flex cable going in there. And then I think the other YouTuber also used the wrong screw. Um, I initially installed here some of the silver ones, but I think in the track point assembly back have been those. I think this slightly smaller they fit slightly better so so much to not having an instruction manual because another youtuber also broke this track point assembly at least that is something we have not done with or two times reassembling it here so the only and devastating mistake we made were the stabilizers but you certainly need to be quite into mechanical keyboards to know such details that is again manual, certainly welcome even for us. Then here is some metal piece for that, stem for the nipple. That you could quite align, but yeah, it looks quite good. And voila. So that's all just back into the case and here this is a little bit short so that is slightly inconvenient to get the mouse buttons in here. And there you have it. One of the very few mechanical keyboards with track point and with just 
four screws here in the back. As far as I've seen, this dip switches control profiles. Apparently, maybe the other ones are apparently undocumented and the six is programming. Then you copy a .txt file for the layout on a unfortunately appearing USB drive. I would have preferred some more DFU firmware upload something. A little bit non-standard, but that's what it is. So then, this better still works now. Otherwise, it would of course be slightly I wonder if there's a separate LED to solder for the cups lock. Actually, maybe there is, maybe we should solder that too. The more you do live on YouTube. Yeah, so far so good. It works quite nicely, certainly quite one of a kind. I hope you enjoyed this video and this assembly. There's also a raw live stream where you could watch me tinkering all of this in all the raw goodness. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something and I hope to see you soon for the next videos and live streams to come.